Hello and welcome to another Creative Coding video. This time we're going to revisit the topic of randomness and take it even more slower with a very simple example. We introduced the idea in the last video and it was a quite a powerful idea and we took our first steps with randomness. But I think today I wanted to make a video which really had a very simple example and just focused on what happens when we play with this thing called randomness. So the example that we'll work with is even clearer than before. So we've, you can see we've logged into open processing. Um, we learned how to do that in the earlier videos. Have a look if you um, re need a reminder. You can see that I've created an empty sketch almost with a simple set up in the simple section and I've made sure that I've enabled the simple library there. This is all covered in the earlier video so if you need a reminder you can always skip back to those. In the draw section if you remember that's where we put our drawing instructions. Here I've written a very simple circle instruction. It's only one instruction and the instruction is to draw a circle. And we covered those before as well if you need a reminder. So this circle is going to be drawn at 400, 300. So let's see what that means. Here's our canvas which is 800 along and 600 down. And the circle is going to have its center at 400, 300 which means it's going to have its center there. The last part of this instruction is 100, which is the size, it's the diameter. So it'll be something like this. Let's have a look if we run the code. Remember the play button for running the code? There you go, yep a small circle in the middle of the canvas, which is what we expected. So far so good, so no new surprises there. If we change the size to 200, it'll be a bigger circle hopefully. Let's look at how that might work. It, the centre of the circle is still at 400, 300, but now the circle is going to have a diameter of 200 which means from one end to the other end from here to here it's 200 so it should be a little bit bigger let's uh, have a go and see if that does happen yep it does happen and if we did one of 300 you can imagine it's even bigger yeah no surprises there now we said we wanted to the computer to take on some extra responsibility and choose the size for us. We can introduce that idea last time. Let's look at that again and take it a bit more slow. So instead of 300, I'm going to write an instruction for picking a random number. Now that instruction is this one here. And all it says is random number with a capital N in the middle for number. That's a convention. You'll see that quite often. Now, if I said to you, give me a random number, you might give me one. You might say seven or 22 or 154 or 7,431. You might do that. But you might come back to me and say, well, give me a range from which to pick that number. That would be more helpful. So I might say, okay, fair enough. Pick a random number between zero and 10. And then you might say, yep, that's fine. I understand that better now, seven or nine. But you wouldn't give me 12 because that's outside the range. And the same thing applies here. It's the same idea. Random number needs a range. So if I say, give me a random number from zero all the way up to let's say 200, 100. 
that means that's asking the computer to pick a number that could be, you know, that, that is between zero and 100. So it could be 50, could be 32, it could be 89, but it won't be 102 because that's outside that range. So when the computer sees this instruction, it says, aha, you're asking me to draw a circle and you want me to draw it at 400, 300, which is the center of the canvas. And the size, oh, you haven't told me the size. You want me to pick the size and you want me to pick it in the range zero to 100. I'll do that. So let's, let's have a go at that. In fact, let's go back to our drawing to see what that might look like. So the center is still there. The size of the circle could be as big as this, but it could be smaller, could be even smaller, but it won't be bigger because that would be outside the range of zero to 100. Let's try that. Let's run it. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> yeah, that's a smallish circle. It looks smaller than size 100, hard to tell. If I click that play button again, it'll run the code again. Oh, that's very tiny. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a very tiny circle there. So it must have picked a very small size. Let's run it again. That's bigger. It looks close to 100, if not 100. Run it again. A bit smaller. That's similar. That's quite small again. So you can see that every time you run the code, it picks a random number and it's different every time it runs. And that's an important point. <clears throat> it won't pick a number and keep that number forever. Every time it sees this instruction, it'll try and think of a number from that range. It'll come up with a random number afresh again. <clears throat> now, what happens if we change that range to 300? What we're asking the computer to do is to pick a number from zero to 300 this time, so the range is bigger. And we're asking you to use that as the size of the circle. So this means the number for the size could be two, just like before, could be 99, just like before. But unlike before, it could be more than 100. It could be 102, it could be 202, it could be 299. But this time it won't be more than 300, so it won't be 305. Let's see what effect that has. Actually, let's go back to our helpful drawing because doing drawings helps us kind of understand better what the code is doing. So it's, it's a good habit to get into. So we've said the rate, the new size could be up to 300, <coughs> which I think is something like that on our drawing. There we go. So it could be as big as that, or it could be smaller or it could be smaller still, could be smaller still, but it won't be out here. It won't be a bigger circle than size 300. So let's run that code. Okay, that does look a bit bigger than size 100. That's similar again. That's quite a smaller one. Ooh, that's interesting. So that is a much bigger circle, isn't it? Maybe that's size 200, I don't know. I didn't, we haven't asked the computer to tell us what size it is, but that's definitely bigger than the 100. <clears throat> Smaller one again. Oh, that's absolutely tiny, that one. You might not even be able to see it, but there's a very tiny circle there. Fantastic. So we'll stop there because we just wanted to talk about randomness and see how it 
can work in a very simple way. So this example is deliberately simple, just so we can make sure that we've understood what randomness is and how we can use it. This is one way to use it. We'll see in future videos many other ways of using it. But have a play yourself. Um, you know, it's it's very simple code. There's only one instruction, um, two if you say circle and random number. Um, you can't really kind of break anything. So so have a go, and it's a, a great way to get a feel for this powerful concept of randomness. And I really mean it is quite powerful. And we'll see the power later. But this is a really nice, very simple and gentle, friendly introduction uh, to using it. Fantastic. And uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, see you next time. Bye.